Hey guys, and welcome to another C-Type tutorial here on the Coach's Legacy channel. In today's video, we'll be discussing pointers and memory management. Now, this is actually a pretty big deal because of course, dynamic memory is a very important part of C and C++, okay? You can't really do anything big without them, okay? And the thing is that Python doesn't have pointers. It doesn't have dynamic memory that you can allocate. And this is a problem, right? Because C and C++ is such a big it's such a big deal. You're using them so much. You're returning pointers. You have functions that return pointers to some memory. And Python doesn't even have pointers in the first place. So how are you going to accept those pointers from those C functions? Okay, and and that's vice versa. By the way, how will you pass in pointers from Python into our C functions? And we've already seen this actually to some degree when you were creating you know character pointers in the previous video where we were talking about strings, those are actually pointers, right? To a bunch of characters. Now, we can't actually use that, of course, for other stuff. And for that, we actually have a dedicated data type. There's a dedicated data type called pointer within the C-types module, okay? It's basically this little thing right here. We have pointer and we also have this one. There are two different types of pointers. There's a slight difference and we'll talk about that. But basically we'll be using these two types and we'll be basically in this video, this whole video is about creating two functions in our C library, which we'll create here in a minute. The whole video is basically about allocating some memory in C, returning that memory, or sorry, returning a pointer to that memory into our Python code, mess around with it a bit, you know, maybe print out its value, modify it a bit or something like that, and then return the memory return the pointer back to our C program where we deallocate it. Because remember, Python cannot allocate dynamic memory. That also means it cannot free that memory. So if you just bring that memory over, if you just bring you know, the reference, the pointer to that memory into your Python code, but you don't delete it, then you know, you'll end up into a memory leak. That's you know, a memory problem. You'll have that memory allocated, but no one's gonna delete it. So it's gonna cause problems. So you need to do this. Python is going to go to C and take the pointer. Okay, it's gonna use it. Once it's done, we're gonna give it back to C where C will free that memory. Okay, that's the basic gist of it. Okay, so hopefully you understood that. Now let's talk about, uh, or before that, before that, let's just go ahead and allocate those functions. Okay, let's create these functions in C and then we'll deal with the Python side of things. All right, so the first function is going to be um, this. It's gonna return a pointer to a string, a character pointer, basically. And we'll call this alloc memory, allocate memory. And this takes no parameters. And this dynamically allocates some memory. And let me just leave a space in there. And we'll use str dupe. Okay, which is basically a way of you know declaring dynamic data. Uh, you can also use malloc, same thing, really. So if I just do this, hello world, we now have some, some dynamic memory. Okay, now what I'll do is return a pointer. Okay, return this pointer, and this will go back into our Python code. And I'll just leave one printf statement in here so that we know this function is being called. Okay, this will be useful later on. Memory allocated. And good. Now I'll make another function, and this function is going to free our memory. Okay, because remember Python cannot cannot do that. So this will actually take that character string. Okay, this can take this can be any pointer, by the way. It can be an integer pointer or whatever. The process is the same, right? So let's just call this pointer instead. Okay, and over here I'll just go free pointer, and that's it we're done. That's all it does. That's all you need to do. And I'll just make another printf statement here that says memory deallocated or memory freed, whatever. So that's our functions in C. Okay. Now let me just bring up the terminal and hold on. Let me just generate that file again. I have it here somewhere in my history. Yeah, there. Oh, okay, uh, this is something annoying. I need to do this again. 
I need to navigate over to my tutorials and ctypes folder. I'm now in here. I can now run this command to generate the shared library and enter and done. Okay. Now, now we need to actually code things from Python's side. Okay. So let's take a look at how to do that. All right. So the very first thing I need to do is define these functions. Okay. Define these functions within Python. So I'll call the alloc function over here. Okay. The name can be anything by the way. And see library dot alloc. What's the name? Alloc memory, right? Alloc memory. And I just do this, then alloc func. And it doesn't have any arguments, right? So I'm just gonna do rest type is equal to what's the rest type? What's the return type? It's a pointer. And Python doesn't have pointers, but guess what? C types does. So I'm gonna use this pointer over here, and this accepts a type of corrector pointer. Because what kind of pointer do we want? We want a corrector pointer. Okay? So that's why we're using this format. Okay? Otherwise, you could type in integer in here. Okay? You could type integer in here, you could type float or whatever, and that'll give you a pointer to it. So if I come down here and now define the other one, free func, see library dot free memory, then it just had a single argument type. So what's that argument type? It's a C types pointer. Okay, C types dot C car pointer. Great. Now I can use these two functions now. I can use the alloc function and the free function. Now what I'll do is C string pointer is equal to alloc func. And now we just allocated some memory. And if I want to print out the value, okay, let's just do something simple. Okay, let's just print out the value of that string. Okay, what's the value of the string? Hello world. Okay, now we need to actually convert this into a proper format first. Okay, uh, we need to, we're you know, bringing a pointer in from C, we need to do some conversion stuff first. So what we're basically gonna do is C string is equal to C types dot C car pointer and then we'll do from buffer. From buffer basically returns uh, appropriate C types data type. Okay? Because right now it's not really a C, it's not really a proper type. Okay? I'll show you that in, in a minute actually. So if I just do this, okay, this will give us the object that we need. Now just watch. If I try to actually print this out, what do we get? I assure you it's not going to be something that we recognize. If I print this out, we get this. Okay. Now that's a LP, LP underscore C charpy object. I'm not sure what the LP stands for, but it's not really your regular C types object. Okay. And point in case. Okay. Let me, let me show you this. C types objects, they have a dot value attribute, right? The dot value attribute, which returns a Python version of that object. So if it's a C int, okay. If you do C int object dot value, it'll give you a Python integer in return. Okay. It, it, that's something important to remember. So if I do this, it's going to say it doesn't have it. Okay. That makes sense. But if I do this on this, the C string, it's going to work. You can see it's even giving me that suggestion because the reason why this is going to work because we've used this, the from buffer function returns a C types object. Okay. So if I do this, watch, it's going to print out hello world. Oh, and let me just fix that a bit. I should put some new lines in there. Oh, wait, not there, not there. It should be in here. Okay. And good. So if I come here now and I need to recompile that actually now. So let me just go back into there, into that directory and then call that command. Where is it? There it is. And now if I run this, it's going to give me hello world and memory allocated, but I haven't freed up that memory yet. Okay. So what I need to do is free func and I just pass in that C string pointer there. Okay. And don't confuse this with the pointer, by the way, 
it's not okay it's not it's, it's not that that you know it's not this pointer so that's why I don't accidentally you know pass in C string into this okay you need to pass in the C string pointer because that's what's actually pointing to that memory location so if I do this memory allocated we printed it out and memory deallocated and now we can do whatever we want over here change its value do whatever all right, so let's take a proper look at pointers. We already know how to use them as return types and as argument types for functions, but how do we properly use them in our Python code? Well, let's take a look at that. There's two different ways, okay, I mentioned earlier. The first method is a little more conventional, so let's take a look at that first. So, if I create a variable here, a C types variable, C integer, this can be anything by the way, and I just give it a value 100. So I want to create a pointer to this. How do I do that? Well, I just do pointer. This is the arbitrary name, by the way. And I do C types dot pointer. And then I just pass in num. And let's see if, if it pointed correctly. I'll do ptr dot contents. Contents is the value. Okay, the pointer is pointing to a memory location. If I do dot contents, it gives me the value at that memory location. So if all was you know well and good, this should give me a hundred. It should print out one hundred. And there we go. It printed out that value. Okay, good enough. Now what we want to do is basically take a look at the other method. Okay, and what's different? What's different? Why are the two ways of creating pointers? Okay. Oh, and one last thing, I just want to mention that don't try doing this. Okay, because if you do that, then you get this. Okay, because I don't know why exactly, but you cannot create a pointer to a regular Python object. Okay, so you may want to keep this in mind. I guess it's because Python doesn't really have the concept of pointers, so you need to use the data types in C, which is another good reason why you should be using, you know, the C data types. Okay, which is something I discussed in the video for uh, data types in C, in C types. All right, so let's take a look at the other type now. Let me just bring this back. Okay, now I'm going to create a second pointer called pointer2, and this is done like this. Okay, this looks pretty similar to when we declared the return type for that function. Now, what this is saying is that create a pointer but it doesn't point to anything, okay? It doesn't point to anything, not yet. This is an empty pointer, but we do know that this pointer points to an integer, okay, a C integer. That's what we do know. So if I want to assign this a value, I can do ptr2.contents and then do num, okay? Now, if I print that out, we'll get 100. Let me just uncomment that out. And if I print this, we'll get a hundred, a C long a hundred. So what's the difference? What's the difference in these two methods? Well, the thing over here is that this directly returns an object. Sorry, it returns a pointer to the object that you give in its parameters, which is also why you cannot pass in something like five in here because that's just, uh, you know, it doesn't have a memory location, it's just a value. Okay, so you need to pass in some kind of variable here and not just any variable. You need to pass in a C types variable, like a float, a C float, a C int, or something like that. Okay, or a C car. So you need to pass in that and it'll return a pointer to that object. This on the other hand, creates a pointer of that type, like a C integer. And then you can assign it a value later on but it's, there's not just an aesthetic difference. There's actually a performance difference as well because this is actually faster because there's some kind of internal system, uh, internal cache system within C types and this technique is able to reuse pointers, okay? I don't know how that works. It's something we're not really supposed to know. It's kind of, it's kind of a black box situation. You just need to know that this uses, you know, the recycling of pointers with a cache system, so it's a bit faster, okay? So when possible, use this format, okay? I, I think this should suffice for pretty much uh, all your situations, okay? 
So that's just something I wanted to tell you. This may seem a little more convenient, but it's a bit slower. Okay, again, it's only a really big deal if you're, you know, if you're doing something big, computationally big, but I don't see why you would be using C types in the first place if you weren't trying to speed up your code. So this is something I kind of feel the need to point out, okay? Because we're doing this to speed up our code, we're using C types to make our code run faster, so this is something that I feel I should mention, even if it's just a minor thing, okay? And with this, we're basically done, okay? There's just um, one last thing I should just mention anyway, is that if you just want to change what it's pointing to, just do this. num2 is equal to c types dot c int 200 and this. This just changes what it's pointing to, okay? And this goes for any type of pointer because both of these are the same type of pointer, by the way. This function actually uses this in the back end, okay? Long story. Just look at the documentation if you want the really, really in-depth analysis. But I will forewarn you in advance, the documentation is very heavy, very, very heavy. So yeah. Anyways, so with this we're done. I hope you guys learned quite a bit in today's video. We discussed memories and pointers and all that in a lot of detail. I hope you guys, you know, liked the video. If you do, make sure to like, leave a comment, leave some feedback. Tell me what you thought. Is there something else you're interested in? And I do hope you guys subscribe to the channel because we have one more video left on C-types. And of course, we have, we have other stuff too that we have planned. But the next C-types video is going to be about using C++ with Python. As you notice so far, we've been using C the entire time. There's a reason why I haven't used C++ yet because there's a slight problem or a slight, there's something that we need to change in our code to use C++. So I have a whole video on that and we'll discuss that in the next one. So yeah, stay tuned. See you later.